Oh, welcome, guys. <laughs> guys, I'm more excited right now because it is the season of my birthday. Yes, my birthday is on December 25th. So, guys, all the entire Blue uh, community, I'll be expecting your good wishes for me on that day on December 25th, which is Christmas Day. Can you imagine that? That's why I have my Christmas tree already at my background right here, okay, in the spirit of the season. Now, right now, let us get into the matter of the day. Today, we are starting uh, what I called Chicken SOS. Yes, what did I call it? Chicken SOS. Yes, Chicken SOS means um, when the chicken cries for emergency response. Oh, that is when chicken is crying for your help sometimes a lot of people don't know that chicken actually cry for your help as the farmer as the husband man of the farm the chicken cries for your help they they they, they have different signal they send to you but you as a farmer if you don't understand this different signal right from the time of brooding tea the time they are ready for 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 slaughter or for market you won't be able to understand when they are in trouble, when they need help, or when they don't need help, when they need medication, or when when they just need a, a, a temperature regulation or any environmental regulation that you need to do for them. You don't, you won't know. So sometimes you start running health as when the the, the the trouble has already visited your farm. So that's why most time we have crises in uh, in a particular season or some farmers have it a couple of seasons of their farming so right now we are going to be kicking off this particular episode of chicken sos with temperature and ventilation yes we are going to be talking about temperature and ventilation over the time as i keep communicating and reporting with farmers or uh, attending to uh, my clients who are consulting me privately, I've come to really realize that one of the biggest problems that a whole lot of farmers are facing in their farming is not knowing how to uh, uh, differentiate between temperature management and ventilation management in their farm. Yes not knowing how to differentiate between temperature management and ventilation management in their farm. So during brooding time, all of us know that uh, uh, your chicken needs a specific amount of heat when they are just day old, from day old to like 10 days or 14 days of their life, they need uh, a particular amount of heat, which is uh, averaging 21 degrees Celsius. Yes. So, but the mistake a whole lot of people make during the time of receiving these birds into their farm is that they tend to seal up the whole pen. They tend to seal up the whole brooding pen, thinking that that is what is going to increase temperature or that is what's going to normalize temperature for them. Good and fine is going to make the temperature look ambient and okay for them. But you do not have to shut off the entire ventilation system of your farm because you are pursuing temperature. Are you get what I'm talking about? You don't have to shut off the entire ventilation of your farm because you are pursuing temperature. In as much as it needs standard temperature to you know survive in this their early stage of life, they as well need standard ventilation at this very very important stage of their life so if you shut out one and then if you shut out one in pursuit of the other you are creating a problem in the life of those chicken you may be thinking that oh i'm breeding them very well i'm breeding them very well my brother my sister you are frying up your chicken I have watched a couple of my uh, 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 my followers, you know, sending videos of their brothers to me, and it looked like an oven. 
how could you seal up the the, the, the entire farm, both side up and down, with nylon or polythene bags, just because you want to create ambient temperature for them? Then tell me what is the need for the heat that you have provided already, either by gas, by charcoal, by electricity, or whatever type of a uh, heat that you are providing for them. What is then the need for all those heat? You have sealed up everywhere already. And this is not good. It's not fair. It's not fair to them. You seal up the, the, the roof and the whole side with nylon. It is shutting off their good air so they are not having enough or good ventilation at all and this is going to affect their health either presently or in future so you are pursuing the biology clock of your chicken but if you do not put the you know the temperature variation in uh, the temperature and the ventilation in proper perspective you are mortgaging their life for what you think you are giving to them. Sometimes I do open my brooders, the, the entire side of my brooder, but I don't even seal my brooder roof. I don't seal it. I, that one is already, already out of it. Sometimes I can even fold up my entire the entire curtain of my brooder just to make sure that they have enough ventilation but make i also have to make sure that the temperature management is appropriate that is the temperature is at the ambient stage 21 degrees celsius so guys if you are not using thermometer like me i don't use thermometer in my farm but i know when they are okay and when they are not okay so the chicken has a way of communicating it to you those of us who understand what I'm talking about right here, I know that you will be nodding your head right now. So I'm, I'm still going to be showing some pictures, showing you how to know when your chicken is okay, temperature-wise or not. When your chicken are okay, temperature-wise, you see them, you know, roaming around evenly in the entire farm. They'll be roaming around eating and drinking and enjoying running here and there in the brooder. That signals to you that the temperature is ambient enough for them. Even if you roll up the cotton, even if you, you allow breeze to blow into the farm and out. But when you see them running around like that, you know, they are not clinging to each other or they are not moving far away from the source of heat. It means that the temperature is ambient enough. The temperature is good enough for them. But when you see them clinging to the source of heat or, you know, clamoring together or, you know, gathering together at each point in time or at any particular location where they feel that uh, there could be source of heat or they try to start generating heat from each other by, you know, clustering together, you then know that there is trouble. That means that the temperature is too is too low for them. You then have to increase the temperature for them. But when you see them running away from the source of heat, some of them kissing the wall and backing the, ent the entire brooder, understand, then you know that there's a problem. The problem is overheating. Understand, your temperature is too hot. So they are having heat stress. They are running off and that's, this whole scenario I'm trying to paint to you, apart from the, the the first one I described, that they are moving so evenly and, you know, running here and there and this everything seems to be okay with them. Apart from that, every other one is dangerous to your chicken. Every other temperature situation is dangerous to your chicken. So when your chicken cling to each other, what is imminent at that point in time is stampeding. Sometimes you, you, you wonder, you just came to the farm and uh, they are just two, three days old and 
uh, they cling to each other like that and when they now try to leave each other where you have increased their temperature or do one or two things you see that about two or three uh, 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 chicken are already dead what make them to die is because every other chicken every chicken is trying to cling together and then there is stampede they will have stampede they would have stampede on those that are weaker and feeble among them and then those ones will die even if some even if those ones are not weak or feeble among them but the pressure of many chicken clinging together the weight of all the chicken put together can decide to suffocate the one that is below them so because of that there is problem sometimes you start seeing some of the chickens start you know raising sonorous voice that is they they they, they, they be raising isolated voices in the midst of the entire chicken you hear it, they make it plan, 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 plan. There is trouble. So they are trying to report one or two things to you. So that is why, as a farmer, you are breeding your chicken. Make sure that you are there with them. I'm not asking you to remain there with them permanently, but at least every two or three hours, check on them and spend at least one hour or 40 minutes with them just to you know spend a beautiful just to try and understudy them know how they are feeling how they are faring what they're doing how how they are eating which of them is performing poorly which of them is tending to to to, to, to have cough which of them is tending to have any kind of crd or deformity or whatever you try to notice them you try to understudy them if not they will have some imminent problem that is in their midst you will not know you feel that all is well now i'm tr i'm trying to see how i can you know paint the picture that will enable you to differentiate ventilation from heat management or temperature management in your brooding why i'm starting it from brooding is because this is the cradle of life this is the beginning of their life and any mistake made at this point in time affects them throughout the entire farming season. Sometimes we feel that we, we are doing them good by uh, making the, the, the brooder airtight. If you make the brooder airtight, you have just committed a, a, a crime of excluding good oxygen from them. Because as they are plenty together, they are all using up the oxygen in the air and then releasing carbon dioxide into the air. So the air in their means become too tensed, overloaded with carbon dioxide. That is the oxygen percentage in, in, in their air is too low because the fresher oxygen outside don't have enough space to come into their midst all because you are looking forward to balancing their temperature while shutting off their ventilation most of the time this can lead to poor development of their respiratory system which of course will make them to have respiratory problem, either presently or in future. This is what, this sometimes results into CRD, chronic respiratory disease. That sometimes you keep treating and treating, you may not be able to find solution to it until the entire flock is either wiped out or you still have a few of them to, to present as the fruit of your labor. Whereas you have already caused problem from the cradle of their life. So guys, whenever you are setting up your brooder, I'm not asking you not to drop your curtains, but take cognizance of the external weather condition. If the external weather condition is kind of hot, 
like in Africa right now, in Nigeria right now, during this time of December, everywhere is hot. I do not even encourage anybody brooding at this particular time, as at this time of shooting this video, to on heat source or to, I mean, to turn on heat source or to increase heat source during the afternoon time or during the daytime of their brooding during this period of time in Nigeria. Why? Because the temperature is always off the hook at this time. So if the external temperature is already high or getting too high and you start setting up fire or heat source inside your brooder at this period of the year, October, November, December, September, October, November, December, you are just frying up your bird. You are frying up your bird. So because of that, you sometimes come to the farm and meet that your birds are, are scampering for help. Understand? The, 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 you will see them kissing the wall, embracing the wall, running, running helter skater, trying to see if they can get out, trying to see if they can get any ambient temperature that is better than the heat that they are in. Sometimes you start seeing them dying. And that problem can continue from their heads forward. Most especially those of you who rent brooders to, to, to brood your, your birds. Please, if you want to rent a brooder, rent a brooder that can enable you to manage both temperature and the uh, 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 ventilation properly. Else, you will be you will be putting yourself in trouble. If the brooder you are renting is 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 naturally sealed up totally because the 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 person that built that brooder believed that that is how a brooder should be built. Get off that brooder. Take your entire fumigate. And make sure that you have pre uh, prepared your your grow out farm properly. Take them to the grow out farm and then. You know, drop your curtains a little bit, and then create, set up a brooder within the grow up, the the grow out farm, and then from there you can open up the grow, uh, you can open them into the grow out farm when they have hit like three weeks or four weeks of their, I mean yes, of their age. Gradually you expand. When you go to my video where I discuss uh, 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 space requirement for uh, uh, farming for poultry you will see what I'm talking about. I can't be going into that now. So, guys, just scroll through my entire videos on this channel and then you see what I'm talking about. Well, uh, just a quick digression. Please, if you have not subscribed to this YouTube channel, why don't you do it now? It doesn't cost you money. Just click on the red button below the screen and then, you, voila, you already subscribed, that's it. Then click on the like button and then turn off the no notification. You are already a member of the Obilu TV community. And then you will be always be the first to get our uh, video notification or update anytime we upload. And by the grace of God, we shall be uploading often and often so that all your questions will be well answered. So guys, don't waste your time. Just subscribe and it will encourage, you, it will encourage us to do more for you by the grace of God. Okay, now back to what we are talking about. Make sure that your ventilation is no more gauge for temperature management. So with that, you'll be able to achieve a proper output in your farm without uh, losing your bird for the sake of trying to give them the best temperature that they want. Thank you.